It is a gorgeous night in the Music City, and we've got ASUN Soccer on tap for you here on the Lipscomb Athletics YouTube. Welcome to Lipscomb Soccer Complex for tonight's contest between the visiting North Florida Ospreys and the Lipscomb Bisons. Lipscomb, a perfect 5-0 in conference play. They have not dropped a single ASUN contest up to this point. They're looking to keep that train rolling here as North Florida comes into Nashville trying to pull off the upset. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Lipscomb Soccer Complex. I'm Noah Severson. Again, Lipscomb 8-4-1 overall, 5-0 in A-Sun play. They are 5-1 here at home. North Florida, meanwhile, 3-5-1, 2-2 in A-Sun action, 1-4-1 on the road. And Lipscomb, as we mentioned, this five-match unbeaten streak in conference play. They have dominated as of late five wins in a row. They've won seven out of their last nine, only one loss since August 28th. That was at Xavier back on September 11th. They've outscored opponents 12-2 to in conference play, and they've shut out each of their last three A-Sun foes. They have not allowed a goal at home since September 4th against Florida International. Let's get you the starting lineups for both teams, and we'll start with North Florida. Starting in goal, the sophomore out of Miami, Sofia Milliancano. Back in the defending line will be Alina Thurston, along with Lauren Weiss, Aaron Jones, Zara Siassi. In the midfield will be Chloe Lynch, Amanda Hartman, and Avery Walraven. And at the point of attack for the Ospreys tonight, Mason Fry, Jersey Data, and Ali Fekini. For Lipscomb, meanwhile, here's what their starting 11 looks like for head coach Kevin O'Brien in his 11th season at the helm. Starting between the pipes is the reigning ASUN goalkeeper of the year, C.J. Graham. Defending her in the back line will be Kendall Wade, Emily Patty, Olivia Carapaza, and Angela Steidel, along with Logan McFadden. In the midfield will be Faith Adams and Shelby Kraft. And at the point of attack, Kalea Perry and Kelly Byler. A big note for Lipscomb tonight. The first career start for Kendall Wade, a sophomore out of Kingston, Tennessee, making her first appearance of the season, and it comes in a start. And certainly a big moment for Kendall here tonight as she will take over for Katia Hanger as the right center back. And certainly a teammate to her left that she can trust going into tonight's action. That's Logan McFadden, who has started in just about 70 games in a Lipscomb uniform. So Kendall Wade... Certainly a name to keep an eye on, played in only four matches last year, a total of 41 minutes, and she makes her first appearance of 2022, and it's a start here in conference play against North Florida. Lipscomb in the black kits with the purple trim, the white numerals on the back, North Florida in their white kits with the navy blue trim and navy numerals. And we are underway from Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Lipscomb 5-0 in Asa in action, North Florida 2-2 two two in conference play. Lipscomb trying to keep up with Liberty. They are one point behind the Flames, having played one fewer match. Lipscomb with five wins at 15 points. Liberty with 16 points. They are also unbeaten in conference play. Five wins and one tie. And although Liberty and Lipscomb will not meet in the regular season, those two appear to be on a collision course. And it certainly looks like those two will meet up in the tournament. Those have been the two most complete teams up to this point in the season. And again, the top two teams in the A-Sun will host their separate pods of the A-Sun tournament with the highest remaining seed able to host the championship. Kalea Perry on the left wing, across, nobody waiting. Faith Adams now to send it back. Header up and in, Byler glances it wide left. And Perry will pass back, now a flick up. Kraft trying to get the header, and North Florida just needs a clearance now as they try to pass it simply out. Shelby Kraft, though, dispossesses and wins it back. And Lipscomb on the attacking foot here in the early few minutes. But a pass given away, and the Ospreys will try to mount a counter, but an errant pass goes out of play. So that's where Lipscomb stands. North Florida, meanwhile, ninth in the A-Sun standings out of 14 teams. Again, the top eight teams make the conference tournament. So they're looking for a result here tonight, and they do have some recent success against Lipscomb. They played them last year in the regular season in Jacksonville and won in double overtime, one of Lipscomb's few conference losses last season as they ran roughshod over the A-Sun en route to yet another NCAA tournament and another A-Sun Conference Championship. 
Down the far side, that's Erin Jones trying to find room. Has her pass intercepted. And Lipscomb will have a throw on the far side. Emanuela Shirk in the starting lineup this evening for Coach O'Brien. Lipscomb has been playing some of their best soccer of the year over the last few weeks. Won seven out of their last nine matches, including five wins in conference play. Looking eerily similar to what they were able to accomplish last year when they went 7-0-2 in their nine A-Sun matches. Brought a lot of people back from that squad. Byler tries to flick it with her back foot. Now a shot, Emanuela Shirk, wide left from the top of the 18. North Florida returning nine starters from last year's team. And they come in playing some good soccer as well. They won each of their last two matches. Won 3-1 at Stetson and then took down Jacksonville State. 1-0 on a last minute goal. Lips come into the attacking third. Byler leads Emily Patty who resettles with the right foot. Now fires a strike in. Here's Byler to pick up the loose change. Has her shot blocked and North Florida attempts to clear it back out. Byler there nearly able to take advantage of the North Florida mistake. And now the ball comes crashing on the other side and a miscommunication as Kendall Wade and Logan McFadden collided and maybe just some, uh, some nerves there from Wade as wasn't quite sure what McFadden was going to do and those two collided and North Florida has it into the attacking third. Stout defending from McFadden there as she kept the Osprey off the ball. Kelly Byler with the push and a foul awarded to the Osprey. That was Amanda Hartman, the junior, taking a tumble and the visitors will have a free kick. Just over four minutes into the first half here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. A couple of shots registered already for the Bisons. As Jones, the freshman, will take this free kick. Drifting in. Still in the danger area. Emanuela Shirk leads it out for Adams. Deftly stepping in front was Jones, and that will force Adams to be more patient here. She's double teamed. She does win the throw. Olivia Carapaza here on the near side. Trying to get it to Byler. Lauren Weiss stepping in front. It is kick for a cure night here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Folks decked out in pink here on the near side bleachers. Shirts being sold tonight with the proceeds going to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Adams spinning through traffic, nicely done, and has it poked away by Ali Fakani. Carapaza with a quick throw, up for Kalea Perry with her left foot, boxing out the defender, spins to her left, looking for a lane, across, Shirk off the hip to Byler, Byler a touch, and cleared away by the Osprey defender as it trickled past Million Cano. And now an inquisitive toss up. Million Cano collided with Byler, no whistle. And the defender sends it out of bounds. Lipscomb wasting no time. They've got their foot on the gas pedal here in the early going. Kraft back for Adams. Now Carapaza across. Byler up. Shirk redirects the header, but white right rather into the waiting grasp of Sophia Million Cano. And Million Cano on one knee as play is stopped by our referee. Million Cano staying down, just needs a minute, and now the trainer will come out as well. And the backup goalkeeper for North Florida is starting to warm up on the far sideline. 
And Million Cano is gesturing that she needs to come out. Three goalkeepers on the roster for the Ospreys. One of them, Rachel Fishkin, the junior, is going to come in here. Graduate of Stoneman Douglas High School out of Parkland, Florida. And so she will take over for Million Cano. The third goalkeeper on the roster is Sarah Barentine, the sophomore out of Dunedin. Couldn't quite tell what happened with Million Cano there. She kind of skied up. She did run into an, an attacker there on the far side, but looked like it happened a little bit earlier, so she was kind of toughing it out until play was stopped. Six minutes in to the first half, no score. Three shots already for Lipscomb, including one that was on target. Angela Steinel steps in front of that cross. Nice little one-touch pass from Byler, and here comes Perry down the left side. Two white jerseys hounding her. Perry gets her on one, splits the double, still on her feet, and here she goes with an avenue to cross, and she wins Lipscomb a corner. Skillful dribbling down the far side from the redshirt freshman Kalea Perry, who has been outstanding here in 2022. Transfer from VCU, five foot seven redshirt freshman. Five goals on the season for Perry. And a corner kick up coming for the Bisons, their first of the night. And it hits the defender, Alina Thurston, who was fortunate that that one was not on frame. It does go out of bounds and we'll try a corner again, this time from the near side. Again, Fishkin in goal right now. If you're just joining us, an injury to Sophia Milliancano has forced Coach Falconer to go to his bench six minutes in. The corner from Perry is a low one. Skittering to the back post. Here, Steidel, the redirect off the top crossbar. And North Florida will send it out of play. Angela Steidel, the left back, had one right into her grass. Pretty good-looking shot. But the top bar unkind. And the best chance yet for Lipscomb. Byler, Kraft hustling, trying to keep it in play, but it did go over the end line. Lipscomb with 28 goals to lead the A-Sun. Liberty two behind at 26. And then you got to go all the way back to 19, which is where Stenson checks in in terms of the top scoring teams in the A-Sun. This has been a big time attack for the Bisons. Certainly with Shelby Kraft getting more creative freedom to push up, that has helped open up things. The return of Kelly Byler cannot be understated. Leads the A-Sun by a wide margin with her eight goals. Carapaza, a beautiful ball into the middle, the heart of the penalty area. Shirk now, Kraft. And North Florida making sure it stays up into the air before they clear it back to the midfield. Carapaza with Fakani on her tail. And a throw in coming for the Bisons. Logan McFadden looking to switch fields. Aaron Jones on the far side for North Florida. Walraven trying to Get the give and go. Adams back for Wade, who quickly finds Carapazza. Plenty of green grass in front. And the big clear from Siassi, who is so vital to what North Florida does back there. Kendall Wade with her first early test on an island and was able to head it to the side. Shirk back for Patty. Now Perry, a good run with the overlapping Shirk on her left foot. Finds Perry again on the wing. Nice run from Emily Patty. She'll have a go, and it's wide right. Good looking attack for the Bisons as Emily Patty comes all the way back up from her left, left back position. And she had a lane to shoot, and certainly the left and right backs for Lipscomb, unafraid of coming up in pursuit. 
and unafraid of taking a shot. And Lipscomb has certainly been the aggressor here through the first 11 minutes. Five shots registered, including a, top, a couple rather on frame. Siassi will use her safety valve. Fry could not quite keep it in play. Lipscomb has been knocking on the door. Trying to take advantage of the reserve goalkeeper now in net with Rachel Fishkin replacing Million Cano. As we noted, Wade making her first appearance in 2022 at right center back. Played in four games last year, a total of 41 minutes. Sophomore out of Kingston, Tennessee. Comes up here in a big spot, middle of the season. You're taking a conference foe. Taking them on here at home at Lipscomb Soccer Complex and being relied upon heavily. That's a very important position. Emanuela Shirk trying to step in front of Wallraven. Nicely done by Wallraven. A beautiful ball played up ahead. And here come the Ospreys. Logan McFadden was the last to touch it. It's out of play and a corner coming for North Florida. So we saw how quickly they can spring that counterattack. All started with Avery Wallraven, the junior out of Tybee Island, Georgia, who was able to fend off Shirk and then delivered a beautiful, beautiful ball up for Mason Fry, the freshman. And it was off of McFadden Shin. So Aaron Jones will take the corner. A lot of white jerseys in the mix. McFadden there out in front. As the Ospreys want to keep the pressure on. It's Wallraven stepped in front of North Florida with a flick. It's Fry trying to turn to her right. Kendall Wade won't let her. Now a shot. Slowly trickling in, and that's easy enough for C.J. Graham. So the first real opportunity for North Florida, showing some life here in the 13th minute as they are able to win a corner and then get a couple looks at goal. This is a Lipscomb defense that has been outstanding as of late. Three straight shutouts. They have not allowed a goal at home since September 4th. It's been over a month. Smart soccer play from Carapaza there. She was shielding Picani. Bisons have certainly lived here on the right side a couple good looks on the left side. High pressure from North Florida forces a mistake. And here come the Ospreys. Wallraven. Kendall Wade is there to shut it down with her chest. And that North Florida attacker was offside, recognized it, and that's why she didn't go for that ball. Here's Byler with a run up for Patty. Trying to find Perry. And a great tackle there from Thurston to keep it with North Florida. Kendall Wade tracking for Lipscomb, pokes it out. And is applauded by her teammates for doing so. That will allow her defense to set up. Lipscomb has to mark Jersey Data down here. She has been the top goal scoring threat for the Ospreys, sophomore out of Eustis, Florida. She wears number 12. Canny has three goals, Data has two goals. Both of them have been game winners. Sixteenth minute here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Only a couple more home contests for Lipscomb after tonight. They'll take on Jacksonville on Sunday, and after that, Senior night is the only home contest left. That's on October 16th as they welcome Jacksonville State. Here's Carapaza 
A shot, finds the back of the net. Olivia Carapazzo with a missile from outside the 18. Pass to Diving Fishkin and Lipscomb strikes first. Olivia Carapazza, her second goal of the season. She's best known for setting her teammates up this time. She gets one for herself. A laser for Carapazza. And that developed quickly. Carapazza found a lane and guided that ball home. One nil Lipscomb here. That goal coming in the 16th minute. Second of the season for Carapaza. See what kind of response North Florida has. It's the 29th goal of the season for Lipscomb to lead the conference. They're among the national leaders in that category as well. And you just felt like that first goal was gonna come sooner rather than later with the type of pressure that they were able to put up on the North Florida back line. Here's Adams, stout defending there from Weiss. Lauren Weiss, an ambitious shot, has to be poked away by Graham. A really nice looking shot from Weiss as she came all the way back from her defender position and trying to hunt that top of the frame and CJ Graham taking no chances. Might have gone off the crossbar, but she'll poke it up and over. And a corner coming for North Florida. That goal by Carapaza unassisted for the moment. Five assists on the season for Carapaza among the conference leaders. But uh, like we mentioned now, gets a goal for herself and well-deserved. Fine-looking corner, bouncing in the danger area, skittering around, and cleared for the moment. Here's Weiss, again, a strike. Her second shot from well outside the 18. This one, though, more easily handled by C.J. Graham, the reigning A-Sun goalkeeper of the week. And we are 18 minutes in to the first half now. Lipscomb holding that 1-0 lead on the goal in the 16th minute from Olivia Carapaza. It's won by North Florida. Sensing Graham might be off her line, but Graham able to recover in time. And that's been a factor here early on in terms of where North Florida has gotten their most dangerous opportunities is that high press, Jersey Data. A couple of times now has raced after that back line trying to force a mistake and has done so. Registers a shot. The fourth of the night for North Florida. Two of them have been on goal, both coming from the defender, Lauren Weiss. Byler leading Kraft, that's nicely done. Kraft across, and it has to be collected by Fishkin. The punt from Fishkin, off the head of Wade. Here's Weiss. Steidel wins it with a tough challenge. Byler to Kraft, and now Kraft for McFadden, far side for Patty. North Florida, since that goal, has looked a little more energized. They're keeping their structure, keeping that top form, trying to force a Lipscomb mistake. That's Vacani up there at the point of the spear for the Ospreys. Carapaza, a big ball, played up ahead. Byler has been so good in the air, she gets run over here. As Siassi and her were both going for it, and Byler wore the worst of it. And she is in some pain here. Siassi, one of the captains of this North Florida crew. As Byler will be attended to.
motioning for the trainer to stay, and Byler will slowly get to her feet. Both players were looking up at the ball, and so really no chance for Byler to be able to prepare herself for the contact. Lipscomb will have a free kick, though, parallel with the A-Sun logo that is midway between the penalty area and midfield. Carapaza has showed off that leg already once tonight. Her teammates lined up on the left side of that box and it's played towards goal and a bit too steep from Carapaza. 20 minutes into the first half here. Lipscomb holding the 1-0 lead. Provided the bulk of the chances up to this point in the match. North Florida has managed to muster a couple. On a couple of good runs, including a corner. This will be a handball on Kalea Perry. Both teams have earned themselves a couple of corners. North Florida, two shots on goal. Lipscomb, three shots on goal. Kraft trying to spring a bit break. Bit too much weight on that pass. Good looking flick, North Florida. With some really good passes up to this point in the match. Kraft those steps in front of the latest one and steals it away for the Bisons. Carapaza across for McFadden. And they'll switch fields to the left side. Lipscomb 5 and 1 here at home this year. They have made this field their fortress. Really continuing the theme from the last couple of years and really under the tenure of head coach Kevin O'Brien. I mean, this is a team that did not allow a goal in the postseason last year as they got to host throughout the tournament. Got to book a ticket to the NCAA tournament here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. And really the, the lone blemish is that puzzling 1-0 loss to Idaho State early on in the season. They lost that game 1-0 on an own goal. But since then, it has just been an unstoppable force this Lipscomb squad when they get to play here in the Music City. Corner up coming for the Bisons. This will be their third of the evening. Again, the lone goal tonight coming in the 16th minute on a strike from outside the 18 off the foot of Olivia Carapaza, her second goal of the season. Good looking cross, McFadden charging up for it and Whistle for the contact and a free kick up coming for North Florida. Busy night in the A-Sun as we take a look at some scores from around the conference. Earlier today, Florida Gulf Coast got their fourth conference win with a 5-1 defeat of Eastern Kentucky. Florida Gulf Coast now 4-1 in A-Sun play behind Lipscomb and Liberty who lead the pack. Bellarmine up on Stetson 1-0 in the first half. Jacksonville up on Austin P 1-0 in the first half. And a couple more games scheduled to kick off later this evening. North Alabama hosting Kennesaw State and Central Arkansas hosting Jacksonville State. A run for North Florida, but it's out in front of Jersey Data. But again, North Florida has really ratcheted up the intensity since giving up that goal to Carapaza. They have gotten all their chances in the minutes since then. And they are unafraid to spring that big ball forward for Data. Weiss, again, has looked good from the back line. Some of her passes. North Florida has really made a point of trying to build it and then spring the big ball forward. Lipscomb is going to have a throw in knocking on the door of the attacking third. Just under 21 minutes to go until halftime. Shirt 
from well outside, maybe too far outside her range as that one never really challenged Fishkin. First substitution for the Bisons tonight, for the Ospreys rather. Mason Fry will come off. And Mia Sadler, the sophomore out of Jacksonville, a transfer from Southern Miss will come on to try to push forward this North Florida attack. Sadler playing in her ninth game is yet to register a point. Throwing up for Kraft. Intended for Adams, but poked away by Hartman. Twenty-sixth minute, one nil Lipscomb over North Florida. Steidel with a long throw. And we'll do it over again. Up for Byler, flicks it back, and the Bisons will have a corner. I'm not sure that's what Haynes Grant wanted to do there. She was trying to send it out of play, but maybe not towards that end line. Kalea Perry will take the corner for the Bisons here on the near side. Carapaza running up in case she wants to play it short. A lot of space in that penalty area. Basically all the Bisons on the back post. They will play it short. It's Carapaza up for Adams. And she has it poked away, and now here come the Ospreys. It's a chance for Fakani. Carapaza trying to recover, and does so, and that'll buy at least a little bit of time for the Bisons to reset. They play it for the far side. Coming up is Grant, and Kraft takes a tumble. So the Ospreys will have the throw. Quick passing in, cleared away by the Bisons for now. And North Florida will maybe try things here on the near side. Weiss, back for Thurston. Now Grant for Hartman. Patty working on Grant over there. Out of bounds and another throw for the Ospreys. A lot of bodies clumped up together there on the far side of the field. Kalea Perry and Thurston battling. Perry does well to get it out for Carapaza who feeds Kraft, trying to touch it to herself and a tough challenge North Florida will get the free kick as Siasi was taken out by the foot of Kraft. Siasi really one of the anchors of this team out of Lake Worth, Florida, a junior. Kind of fills that holding midfielder slash center back role, just does it all. Similar to Kraft in that sense where she plays all over the field. Super reliable. Sends this free kick deep right outside the 18. And it's Adams. Deep ball, Kraft and Byler in pursuit. Fishkin will let it come to her so she can use her hands and quickly the throw outward. Again, if you're just joining us, Sophia Million Cano exited the game in the sixth minute with an injury, the starting goalkeeper. And so Fishkin had to take her place. Junior out of Parkland, Florida. Always have to be ready as a backup. You never know when your number is going to get called. Here's Kalea Perry down the left lane across. Faith Adams would have been there had that ball not been played out by a North Florida defender. Sixteen minutes to go before halftime. One nil Lipscomb on the goal in the sixteenth minute from Olivia Carapaza, her second of the season. On a strike from outside the 18. Up 
A flick up ahead for Data. Data, a foot race to the end line, and that ball wins that race. And a goal kick upcoming for North Florida. Kendall Wade has been tested a lot tonight, making her first career start. Held up well there on the dangerous Jersey Data. We have had a much more balanced match over the last 20 or so minutes since that Carapaza goal as these two teams have traded chances. It's been very even in terms of shots, in terms of possession. North Florida responding well to that early Lipscomb goal. And yet you've never felt up to this point like they've truly had a, a goal scoring threat opportunity, one that really challenged C.J. Graham. There was that ball played in from Weiss earlier that she had to poke away. She takes some contact here as McFadden and Graham and an Osprey all fall to the grass. Graham is the one that comes up with it though. And a trio of substitutions waiting to enter for Lipscomb, one waiting to come in for North Florida. Byler, nice redirect header. McFadden skying up for the header. Walraven gets spun down. Here's a ball played up. Kendall Wade there for the header. Steidel now trying to find some space on the outside, and Byler couldn't quite get her foot all the way up to be able to knock it down, and so it's out of play, and we'll have our substitutions. In for North Florida is Kate Carter. As we get you ready for the Lipscomb substitutions, I do know that Tori Wheeler and Lydia Hint are on now for the Bisons. And it looks as though Grace Oliver is on as well for Lipscomb. Corner upcoming for North Florida. Kalea Perry, Faith Adams are off for the Bisons. As is Emanuela Shirk. Weiss at the A-Sun logo. A beautiful ball played in. Tell you what, she has had some fantastic services this evening. Still in the penalty area. And now kicked away. And we'll have a free kick for the Bisons as Steidel had her feet taken out from underneath her. Thirty-third minute at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Lipscomb trying to remain undefeated in conference play. They enter five conference matches up to this point, five wins. 15 points in the standings, one point behind Liberty who won earlier this week. Olivia Carapaz is going to have a free kick on the outside. Five assists on this season for Carapaz. She's already got one goal in this game. Looking for more points. Towards the back post, and it sneaks through. It was last touched by Lipscomb. So a goal kick upcoming. North Florida has proven that their defense can be up to the task taking on some of these premier goal scoring threats for Lipscomb. They have allowed one or fewer goals in seven of their nine matches this season. Really one of the better defenses in the A-Sun. And here they've got an offensive opportunity as Mia Sadler trying to run the break has it stolen away. And that's really been the, the only issue for North Florida is that they will create some turnovers and have a few promising runs. And yet, 
usually been that, that last pass that has eluded them. Lipscomb will get a free kick right around midfield. Carapaza trots over to take it. And Osprey is waiting in the wings to check in for head coach Eric Falconer. 33 wins, 17 losses, six ties at North Florida. And his squad has been really good in a sun play. 17 wins to seven losses and two draws in terms of conference action. Nothing much doing for that free kick. That will allow North Florida to take the goal kick and will allow Annalise Anderson to check in for the Ospreys, replacing Ali Fakani. So Fakani will get a well-deserved breather. Probably won't see her for the rest of this first half. Osprey was taken down. That was Haynes Grant. So a free kick coming for North Florida. So they try to mount a response before the halftime whistle. This is a team that has been very good when they score first and have been unlucky when the opponent scores first. Here's one into the box. Carapaza with the emergency clear there. Oliver, a ball played up. It's Weiss now for North Florida. Anderson. Carapaza back for Wade. Wade probing. Coming off her back line was the North Florida defender. It's Steidel now. Out in front for Oliver. Grace Oliver with lots of room in front. Orchestrating and not on the same page with her attackers there as Kraft and Wheeler were both making runs. Out for Data. But Patty able to poke it free. Now a ball played up and to the middle. It's Carter. Flicking it ahead for Data. Look at that speed, tracking it down, forcing McFadden to make that quick decision, which he does so well. And back we come the other way. Wheeler. Tori Wheeler across for Shelby Kraft in the middle. She's got Oliver to her right, wants a shot. And it stays on the ground, and Fishkin diving to her right puts both paws on it. You don't fault Shelby Kraft for that shot. She's proven she can hit that one. That one just didn't come off her foot the way she intended. And No worse for the better. Here's Grace Oliver up for Shelby Kraft with one defender to beat. Looking for an avenue to cross, floats it to the back post, up and over, and out of bounds. And that will allow two new fresh faces to come in for the visitors. Hannah Farmer and Callie Ann Foe checking in for the visitors. Data comes off, as does Chloe Lynch. Just over seven minutes and change remaining in this first 45. 1-0 Lipscomb on the goal in the 16th minute from Olivia Carapaza. North Florida just 1-5 this season when their opponent scores first. They will have to mount the comeback if they want a winning result here on the road tonight. Kraft stepping up to claim it, flips it to Oliver, up for Wheeler, Thurston steps in front and wins it. That was a good decision from Thurston there as Lipscomb looked to have something promising going. Foul in the middle will allow North Florida to set up their attack. Very balanced Osprey offense this season. Seven different players on this squad have registered an assist this year, which speaks to just how far this back line is willing to push up. Midfielders all participating. Here's a dangerous ball. McFadden heads it up and to the right. Carapaza, the clearance for the moment. Weiss collects it. Up for Anderson. And that ball going to nowhere in particular. It's Carapaza 
on the right side. Big ball played up, and this will allow the Bisons to press forward. Shelby Kraft applying the pressure. Fishkin, the high arcing kick. Carapaza sends it back. Kendall Wade, the header, right back for Sadler. Mia Sadler, a flick, and making a run was Farmer, the fifth year senior out of Savannah, Georgia, but that one too steep for her to go after. Five minutes to go before halftime here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Bison's looking to maintain first place in the A-Sun standings. Trying to get three more points here at home. Lipscomb registered five early shots in the first 16 minutes, capped off by that Carapaza goal. Since then, they've been held to three shots, as North Florida, to their credit, has shown some new life. They've generated some good-looking sequences. They've possessed the ball when they've needed to. And Lipscomb has really been unable to, on many occasions, make that extra pass. They've been settling for some for some deep shots. We'll see what they can get on this time down the field. It's Grace Oliver across. Oh, Byler nearly had it, but it's past her, and Lydia Hint will now try to track it down. The clear from North Florida now. Byler stepping in front of her defender at the last second. Tried to turn her head to make contact, but it whistles past. And another substitution as Byler will exit. And Marcella Cash will enter for the final few minutes of this opening frame. Cash, one of three newcomers to this squad, as here's a ball played into the box and quickly cleared away. Hailing from Beaver Creek, Ohio, transferring from Mississippi State where she played in 23 matches for the Bulldogs in the SEC over the last couple of seasons. Made her way to Nashville to join this NCAA tournament team. Cash here. Physical, able to win it for the Bisons. Finds Carapaza on the right wing. The service with a running craft out of her reach. And it trickles out. And another substitution for North Florida. Breland Anderson coming on for the Ospreys. Pretty nicely done by Callie and Foe there, the midfielder for North Florida. Keep possession alive and find a teammate on the right wing. Whenever you are playing Lipscomb, a lot is going to be placed on the shoulders of your midfielders in terms of pressing forward and attack. You're not going to get too many chances, so you got to make the most of them, and in defense, because so many Bisons push up on the attack that those midfielders have to drop back quickly. Here's Wheeler on the far side, across on the ground. It's Grace Oliver, a right foot flick. Ends up wide left. A nice look from Grace Oliver as Tori Wheeler beat her defender down the line, found Oliver in the box. And Grace Oliver, just a tough angle there. She didn't quite have time to settle and take a strike. An inquisitive flick that ends up left of that left post. 70 seconds remaining in this first half. Lipscomb holding the 1-0 lead on the goal in the 16th minute from Olivia Carapaza. North Florida trying to find something here in the waning moments of the first 45. Ball played up, Marcella Cash. Siasi in pursuit, Cash working on her. 
Gets it to her left foot, gets around Siasi. Cash is taken down from behind, and here's the whistle. And a corner will be coming for Lipscomb. And they'll have to hurry here as the clock continues to run. 30 seconds and counting in this first half. Cash taken down, and you heard the whistle, but it was for the corner instead of a foul in the box. 20 seconds in this first half. Ball is played in. And headed away by Kate Carter, the senior. And now glancing back, 10 seconds and counting. And I think Lipscomb will be more than content to take this 1-0 lead into the break. Nine shots for Lipscomb in that first half. Five of them coming awfully close to being goals. One of them did find the back of the net. That was Olivia Carapaza in the 16th minute. As the Bison switch fields here to the right side, Carapaza had a lane outside the 18 and put a missile past the backup goalkeeper, Rachel Fishkin, after she replaced the starting keeper, Million Cano, in the sixth minute, North Florida. Responding well to that goal as they were able to generate some chances. They register a handful of shots. They put some pressure on the Lipscomb back line. They got a handful of corners in their own right. And yet at the end, the Lipscomb defense stands tall. Another 45 shutout minutes for the Bisons, and they take a 1-0 advantage into the break. We'll step aside when we come back. The second half of action here from Lipscomb Soccer Complex in the Music City. Right now, it's Lipscomb 1, North Florida nothing.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Lipscomb Soccer Complex here in Nashville, Tennessee. Moments away from the start of the second half between the North Florida Ospreys and the Lipscomb Bisons. At the break, Lipscomb holding a 1-0 lead over their visiting conference opponent. A goal in the 16th minute from Olivia Carapaza, her second goal of the season. That is the difference right now. North Florida showing some life, especially in the final 25 minutes of that first half, holding even with Lipscomb. The Bisons able to possess a little bit in the midfield, had a couple good looking chances, and they are the leaders here at the break as they look for three more points here at home and looking to stay unbeaten in conference play. Currently 5-0 and against Aeson Foes, 8-4-1 and overall, trying to improve to 6-1 and here at home as they make that push for home field advantage in the Aeson tournament. Liberty won earlier this week to keep the pressure on Lipscomb to get a result here. A win would push the Bisons in front of the Flames for first place in the A-Sun. A tie would tie them with Liberty for first in the A-Sun. Here we go, start of the second half on the Lipscomb Sports YouTube. And we'll see what adjustments get made by, of course, Coach Eric Falconer for North Florida and Kevin O'Brien for Lipscomb. Bisons were the aggressors early. Lots of opportunities in the attacking third. It seemed like they were living on that side of the field, able to generate a ton of good-looking shots. A lot of them near the goal, but ironically enough, it was the long-distance strike from Olivia Carapaza as she kind of took North Florida by surprise with from how deep she took her shot. I'm not sure that Rachel Fishkin, the backup goalkeeper, was ready for it. And Carapaza was able to put it past her. Ospreys, though, in the attacking third here. Lots of white jerseys. Left foot curler ends up wide left off the foot of Annalise Anderson. A fine-looking attempt from outside the 18 from Anderson. As she tried to guide it toward the upper left-hand corner. C.J. Graham watches it sail out of play. So already some early urgency from the Ospreys as they look for a road result. Trying to keep pace with the top half of the ASUN Conference standings. Came in with six points in conference play off a pair of wins their last two times out. Seventeenth matchup all time between Lipscomb and North Florida. Lipscomb leads the series. 8-6-2, and two. and although that in and of itself is pretty tight, as of late it's been a lot more focused towards the Bisons. Here's a centered ball, headed back out. Kalea Perry collects, trying to get it to her left foot. A pass played up for Shirk. Beautiful guide ball. Shirk now resetting, getting around. She's taken down, and a stoppage as Shirk was sent to the grass, and I believe the referee pointed towards the penalty spot. He did. This will be a penalty attempt for the Lipscomb Bisons as Emanuela Shirk was taken down from behind. And Kelly Byler, who had a penalty kick goal for the Bisons on Sunday against Bellarmine, one of her two goals, will have another opportunity here, looking for goal number nine on the year. She already leads the A-Sun. This would put the Bisons up by two in this match. And she will score. Kelly Byler cashes in. Shirk drew the foul. Byler puts it away. It's 2-0 Lipscomb as Kelly Byler continues her historic season. Nine goals for Kelly Byler. Well out in front of her next closest competitor, for that Golden Boot race. It has just been an outstanding season for Byler. She's now four ahead of the next closest player in the A-Sun for goals. Maddie Lemery of Eastern Kentucky, her teammate Kalia Perry of Lipscomb, and McKinley Burdett, Burkett rather, of Liberty all have five goals. And Byler now has nine. Two nil Lipscomb just a couple of minutes into the second half and certainly a pretty heavy blow to North Florida's hopes as they were playing well the first couple of minutes. 
Lipscomb's really first chance down into the box. Shirk drawing the penalty. And now Patty looking to keep the pressure on for Lipscomb. Don't think she realized the ball went behind her. She does track it down with Data on her back. McFadden a flick into the middle. Byler, the run. And that was Faith Adams who was trying to go to her right. Couldn't keep her footing. And it's collected by Fishkin. Mentioned that this series has been dominated by Lipscomb as of late. They have won seven of the last nine meetings. They've gone seven, one, and one. Last nine times they've faced these Ospreys. Of course, the one loss came last season in Jacksonville as North Florida came back from down 1-0, got a late goal in the 81st minute to tie it, and then a game winner in double overtime. That This is North Florida's first visit to Nashville since 2018. Their last win in Nashville. Got to go all the way back to 2012. Just about five minutes into the second half here in the Music City. 2-0 Lipscomb. A goal in the 16th minute from Olivia Carapaza, her second of the season. And then a goal in the 48th minute on a penalty kick. Kelly Byler burying it for her ninth goal of the season. Perry can't quite connect with Byler. We'll check back in on the A-Sun scoreboard. Earlier today, Florida Gulf Coast got their fourth conference win of the season taking down Eastern Kentucky 5-1. Right now, Bellarmine up on Stetson 2-0 in Louisville. Bit of a surprise there. The Hatters trying to angle for a top four spot. Bellarmine making a push into the top half of the standings. Jacksonville leads Austin P 1-0 in the second half. Kalea Perry spinning to her right. Now a left foot cross right to Fishkin. And the final two matches in the A-Sun tonight, Kennesaw State and North Alabama just got underway. And Central Arkansas hosting Jacksonville State. That also got underway 10 minutes ago. Here is Byler looking for the brace. A bit too steep and a touch wide to the left. Kelly Byler off a great pass. Can't quite finish it. A strong chance for Byler as she tried to collect her second brace in as many games. That had a lot of juice on it and it just kind of kept carrying. 13th shot of the match for Lipscomb officially. Lipscomb will close out this five match homestand on Sunday taking on Jacksonville. And then they'll be on the road for two matches, a Florida trip down to the Sunshine State to face Stetson and Florida Gulf Coast. And they'll finish out the regular season here at home on the 16th against Jacksonville State. Hopefully then more home games as they are in position to potentially host some Ace Sun tournament games yet again. Here's Shelby Kraft in to the attacking third. Thurston with a hard physical challenge. And Lipscomb will keep the throw. North Florida will be in Clarksville, Tennessee on Sunday night to take on the Austin P. Governors. Patty into Shirk, knocked right back. McFadden there, the wall to stop it. And Carapaza will reset, flicking it up ahead. Byler redirects it to the middle. And the Bison stopped their run short. A frenetic 
first seven minutes here in the second half for Lipscomb as they have really upped the tempo. They've won that penalty kick that Byler was able to capitalize on to push their advantage to two goals, and they have not let up since then. Steidel for Carapaza. Byler for Shirk. Now Emily Patty. Shirk gets it stolen away. Here's Anderson waiting for her teammates to join her. Good pressure there from Kendall Wade making her first career start. So far the grade on Wade, very good. She has held her own playing back there, filling in for Katia Hanger. Her fifth appearance in a Bison's uniform. And she's given Lipscomb some really good minutes. Here's Patty, up for Shirk, the overlapping run, now down the line, intended for Kraft. It curls to stay in play, what a gorgeous ball. And Kraft will now send it into the box. Bounces up, cleared for the moment. Shirk tried to maybe possess and then step forward, but it's past her. And here come the Ospreys. Carapaza will use her safety valve. Fifty-fourth minute here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Two 0 Lipscomb in command as they look for their sixth conference win. Wow, Shirk and Foe tackling and the free kick awarded to North Florida. Looked like Shirk was going down and she kind of pulled Foe with her, and so that's why the signal given that this will be the Ospreys kick. Siasi comes over to take it. Soaring ball into the box, McFadden there. Excellent header from Logan McFadden, the experienced veteran. Here's Kalea Perry now, and maybe a bit too strong as Kraft and Byler were both making runs. Perry tried to connect with him. Beautiful passing sequence gives Haynes Grant possession. She now feeds Data with Steidel to her left. Data wins it, back to Grant. Grant stepping through, number two in white. And McFadden trying to clear, and she can send it down the line, she will. And that will allow the Lipscomb back line time to breathe. Haynes Grant, junior, local kid out of Jacksonville. Went to Bishop Kenny High School. Lipscomb has outshot North Florida 14 to six in this match. They've made their shots count. Plenty of them have come from outside the 18 as they try to test the goalkeeper, Rachel Fishkin, who entered this game in the sixth minute after an injury to Sophia Miliancano, the sophomore who has started most of the matches for North Florida this season. Fishkin called upon early. And she does have four saves. Foe unable to keep it in play and a goal kick up coming for the Bisons. Lipscomb trying to stretch their winning streak. They've won five in a row. They've won seven out of their last nine. Have not allowed a goal here at home since September the 4th. Trying to keep that streak going. And trying to play their best soccer at the right time of the year, right? You're trying to play your very best as you enter tournament action, especially in a league like the A-Sun where just probably not going to get an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. You've got to win your tournament to get into the national tournament. And this was a Bison's team that came in with high expectations, bringing up 
pretty much everybody back from that squad that suffered that narrow loss to Tennessee in the first round of the tournament. Brought in some new exciting pieces. And had that big stretch once they went on the road. They drew with SEC foe Vandy. Got some really good results over the course of that road trip and have continued that into some of their best play of the season here during this homestand. Fourth match of a five-game homestand for the Bisons, and they are undefeated on the homestand up to this point, and they're up 2-0 on North Florida. Mason Fry will re-enter for the Ospreys, and she will take the place of Annalise Anderson, the Auburn transfer, who had a terrific-looking shot earlier this half right out of the gate after the whistle came out. Outside the 18 had a missile end up just wide left of the post. Thirty-one minutes to go here in the second half. It's just the third time this season that North Florida has allowed more than one goal in a match. They've given up two up to this point. One on a penalty kick. That came in the 48th minute from Kelly Byler. Next goal for Byler will be her 10th. Kraft dispossesses, finds the aforementioned Byler. Stops, patience to find Shirk. As Lipscomb pushes up, Shirk now, a curling ball intended for Kraft. Back out, high arcing shot from Faith Adams. Well over the bar. 60th minute here in Nashville. Bison's in the driver's seat. Aaron pass from North Florida. Throw and awarded to Lipscomb. Carapazza to take it. Looks like Lipscomb thought about switching fields. North Florida was anticipating that. And so, of course, correction from Lipscomb. Now an interception. And here come the Ospreys. Bacani in the far corner. The service. Clearance for Lipscomb up to the task. And now the Bisons sending it back to the midfield. Kalea Perry takes some hard contact in the back as Thurston collides with her. Perry's slow to get up. Ninth foul on North Florida. We are even in fouls tonight. Nine apiece for both squads. Carapazza certainly has the leg to get this to the penalty area. And that's where she'll send it. A bit to the right. Still in the air. Spinning ball. Faith Adams peels off as Jersey Data will try to work on Logan McFadden. This is a big time matchup here. Data and McFadden, two of the best players on the pitch. It's Data across, and nobody was home. Nicely done by Jersey Data, making something out of nothing. As she had three black jerseys around her, was able to find an avenue to deliver that service, and her two teammates were just a bit too far behind to be able to connect. But hats off to Data there. McFadden not an easy bison to get around. Here's Kalea Perry fighting for position with Thurston. Perry poked away into the waiting grasp of Shelby Kraft. And her shot, a little mishit. Fishkin there to collect. 
Only one shot in this second half for North Florida after tallying five in the first 45 minutes. Lipscomb has picked up right where they left off coming out of the halftime break. Up to this point, there has been no doubt about the more complete team. The Bisons have kept it clean. They've found shots. They have kept possession. They've stood tall when their defense needed it. Here's Carapaza. Tight window there. Closed quickly in North Florida. Twenty-six minutes and change to go here in the second half. Lipscomb would love to add one more to really put this thing away. North Florida has not come back from down two goals this season. Bisons will have a free kick there in front of their own bench. Carapaza in no hurry. Already one goal tonight for Carapaza, her second of the season. It came rather from well outside the 18. This is a high arcing moonshot, and Kendall Wade made contact. Got an elbow in the back from the goalkeeper, but it is cleared away. And Lipscomb will have the throw. Kendall Wade soaring up to make first contact. Wasn't in the best position to be able to angle it on frame. Patty up the line through the wickets of Grant. She recovers, though, and Lipscomb will have a throw. Kalea Perry applying the pressure. See how deep Steinle can put this one. Byler up for Perry. Perry to Byler. She's got the brace. And it's goal number 10 for Kelly Byler. Lipscomb in front 3-0 with a pair of second half goals from their superstar, Kelly Byler. The assist from Kalea Perry, a nifty pass back. And those two forwards have been dynamite here in 2022. Four goals in her last two matches for Kelly Byler. And she stands alone atop the Golden Boot Race. Ten goals this year for number five. Her next closest competitor is at five goals. Her grip on the Conference Player of the Year Award may be tightening. Unselfish play there from Kalea Perry as well. No angle for her, had her back to the goal. Little dump off pass, and I don't know how Byler got that ball through the traffic that was blocking the target. Almost had to blindly shoot it, and it found the corner. Byler again, and a handball on Perry. So the goals tonight, 16th minute for Olivia Carapaza, 48th minute from Byler on the penalty kick. And again here in the 66th minute, Byler in the penalty area off the pass from Kalea Perry. Trio of substitutions for North Florida. Mia Sadler replaces Jersey Data. Haley Shelton comes in for Ali Vacani. And Lauren Weiss checking off. Aaron Jones replacing her. Corner kick for the Bisons. Upcoming. Looks like it'll be Faith Adams to take this corner. Plays it short, right back. 
And offside as Adams was out in front of the last Osprey defender. Sixty seventh minute here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex with three more Osprey players waiting to check in. It's been a second half dominated by the Bisons. A pair of goals. Here's Kelly Byler creating separation. Up for Shelby Kraft. Fishkin comes off her line and dives to get in front. Not the easiest side to come off the bench and play against, but credit to Rachel Fishkin, the junior out of Parkland, Florida, who has done as good as she can hopefully do in relief of Sophia Milian-Cano. Foe on the left wing for North Florida. Nifty move to get around one defender. The service played in, and McFadden was the last to touch it. North Florida thought there might have been a handball. They will get a corner kick. And here come the subs for the visitors. Brylin Anderson, Kate Carter, and Brenna Robinson will all come in for the Ospreys as they t try to break this shutout. Just some sort of positive momentum that they can get going here on this end. Their fifth corner is a good one. Glances off of Avery Wallraven and now sent back to the midfield. Sixteen shots for Lipscomb, including seven on goal. It has been another complete match for head coach Kevin O'Brien's squad in his 11th season at the helm. And it certainly looks like a two-horse race here in the A-Sun between Lipscomb and Liberty. And I wouldn't count out Florida Gulf Coast yet as they won again today, 5-1. They are now 4-1 in conference play. But it should be a very entertaining tournament. A lot of teams lurking in that next tier in terms of teams that could potentially upset one of the top squads. And certainly that match with Florida Gulf Coast next weekend looms large for the Bisons as they will make that trip down to Florida to take on Stetson and Florida Gulf Coast. They don't face Liberty here in the regular season, but they will see what is penciled in as the number three team in the A-Sun, that is FGCU. Got to think if they can win that one and take care of business the rest of the way, they will have control of their own destiny in terms of getting that number one overall seed. Again, the top two seeds will each host a pod of the A-Sun tournament. The 1-8 matchup and the 4-5 matchup will take place at the number one seeds campus. And the 2-7-3-6 matchups will take place on the campus of the number two seed. And then for the championship, the highest remaining seed will host. Goal kick coming for North Florida. Under 20 minutes to go here in Nashville. 3-0 Lipscomb. A pair of second half goals from Kelly Byler has really helped Lipscomb pull away. Here come the Ospreys trying to mount a counter. Tight window there that Logan McFadden quickly shuts. And here comes Emily Patty. Angela Steidel for Perry. Perry working through some white jerseys and now sends it to the right side. That assist for Kalea Perry earlier was her 13th. She's now got 13 points on the season, second on the team, behind only Kelly Byler.
Truly a spectacular season for Kelly Byler. Ten goals in 13 games for the forward. Perry, gorgeous ball up for Shelby Kraft. Kraft, the cross, Byler, the touch, able to keep it in play. Not out of the woods yet. Byler again, a flick, and this time cleared away. That trio all season long has been outstanding. They seem to know each other's tendencies. Perry, Kraft, and Byler working together in harmony. And now Coach O'Brien's going to empty out the bench as seven substitutions will come on. Coach O'Brien wanting to make sure that his team is fresh for Sunday against Jacksonville and sensing that this one may be secure. 73rd minute, 3-0 Lipscomb. And we will get you that full list of substitutions. Ashley Waitucki, Grace Oliver, Tori Wheeler, Lydia Hint, Evie Reeder, Bailey Ettinger, and Marcella Cash all coming on for Lipscomb. And for North Florida, Kate Carter, Rylan Anderson, and Brenna Robinson as well. We mentioned them coming on in the 68th minute. So lots of new faces on the field right now for both squads. And we'll see what the reserves can do for the Bisons. Free kick awarded to North Florida here. Final 16 minutes and change to get some run. Wheeler, Oliver, and Hint were all on in the first half, along with Cash, Ettinger, Reeder, and Waitaki all making their first appearance of the match. 3-0 Lipscomb, a brace for Kelly Byler, and the second goal of the season for Olivia Carapaza. That has been the scoring tonight. North Florida has showed some shines of life, really a, a terrific final 25 minutes of the first half where they appear to be playing even with Lipscomb in terms of chances and possession. Showed good energy, but really Lipscomb, he felt North Florida kind of deflate a little bit when that penalty was awarded that Byler was able to capitalize on. Since then, it's really just been all Bisons. Anderson fouls Cash, and so we'll have a Lipscomb free kick. Well within range for Logan McFadden. This is almost point blank for her. <laughs> Curling on goal and right into the grasp of Rachel Fishkin. Ettinger with those aqua blue cleats. Passes it off for Waitucky. And now Ettinger down the line, intended for Cash. And the throw will go to the Bisons. Ashley Waitucky, the transfer from Purdue. Under 15 minutes to go here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. And a corner coming for the Bisons. As they try to close this one out in style. This will be their eighth corner of the night. Only the third time this season that North Florida has given up more than one goal. Laser of a cross. Here's Wheeler, a flick for Ettinger. Out of her range. Goal kick for North Florida, but first a substitution. Hannah Farmer will take the place of Mason Fry. Free kick for the Ospreys. North 
Tampa, Florida will have a couple of days to train and get ready for their matchup with Austin P on Sunday afternoon. They try to bounce back. Looks as though they will suffer their third conference loss of the season here tonight. But a lot of time left as they try to angle to secure a spot in that A-Sun tournament. Considering what they lost from last year, they lost a couple of starters, only a couple, but one of the ones that they did lose was Thais Hayes, one of the all-time great players in program history. Holds a lot of the records at North Florida for goals and points and shots. She's now playing in the NWSL for the Orlando Pride. She had nine goals last year, provided a big bulk of that scoring production, and so the Ospreys have tried to find an answer for that, and they have kind of answered that in terms of it's a team effort, right? A lot of different players getting in the box score with assists and goals. It's been a balanced scoring attack. Only two Ospreys with multiple goals this year, and that's Fakani with three and Data with two. Seventy-eighth minute in the Music City. Three nil Lipscomb. Nice looking ball sent in, and I believe it was last touched by a bison. It was. Fine ball played in by Brenna Robinson, the freshman out of St. John's, Florida. So the corner for the Ospreys, their fifth of the night. Lipscomb trying to preserve the shutout. They have shut out three straight conference opponents, trying to make it four. Outscored opponents 10-0 over the last handful of matches. C.J. Graham trying to orchestrate a quick break. Here's Tori Wheeler with the speed to make it happen. Tori Wheeler stops and starts and has it poked out of her grasp. That was Haley Shelton with a nice piece of defending. Sadler for Foe, Kraft the slide tackle. Kraft in the middle, up ahead. Marcella Cash trying to get it to her left foot. Cross, Ettinger is there, oh! Couldn't get all the way to her as it was ricocheted away at the last moment. Ettinger appeared ready to deliver the finishing blow. Big Fadden, nice pass. Hint up ahead for Kraft. She guides it, Ettinger. Ettinger, one man to beat, and it's knocked away. Looks like Haynes Grant did the defending that time and paid the price as she is slow to get up. Lipscomb content to play keep away as the clock is on their side. Got to be big for Coach O'Brien to be able to allow these reserves some run here late in the second half with that match coming up against Jacksonville on Sunday. North Florida turning the corner on the attack. Now up the line, glances back out. Coming all the way back to defend was Grace Oliver. She kicks it out towards the midfield. It's Marcella Cash. Jacksonville and Austin P are playing right now. Those are the next two opponents for these two squads. They are tied at one in Clarksville. Jacksonville one, Austin P one. And Bellerman has extended their lead over Stetson. It's 3-0 now in the second half. Bellerman leading Stetson. 
Jacksonville State has scored against Central Arkansas. They lead the Bears 1-0. And nearing halftime in Florence, Alabama, the Lions and the Kennesaw State Owls nodded at 0-0. Ball up for Ettinger. Fishkin comes up and grabs it. 82nd minute at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. 3-0 Lipscomb. Olivia Carapaza open her account in the 16th minute on a goal well outside the 18. And since then, a pair of goals from Kelly Byler in the second half. Here's a cross intended for Cash, and it's out of play. Including tonight, Lipscomb has outscored opponents now 15-2 in conference play. And they look to be in position to shut out their fourth straight ace on foe. It's been a dominant stretch for these Bisons. Tori Wheeler wins it. Wheeler. Ettinger up for Cash. Marcella Cash spinning to her right. And that ball was deflected, I believe, off the foot of Cash. It was a throw in for North Florida. Nice work by Rylan Anderson. A lot of Jacksonville natives on this North Florida club. In fact, eight come directly from Jacksonville, Florida, even more if you include the surrounding towns. Certainly a soccer recruiting hotbed and Coach Eric Falconer has not had to travel far for a lot of his recruiting visits, and why not? A lot of success in Jacksonville. Five minutes and change before the final whistle. Lipscomb looking to coast to what would be their ninth win of the season. Trying to get to a perfect 6-0 mark in A-Sun action. Tucky back, clear from Graham. Foe, may have gotten away with the handball, but we play on. Haynes Grant, fighting for space. McFadden's ball right back to Foe. Foe on target, bounces once, and Graham there to receive it. 85th minute at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. Marcella Cash, point of attack, dicing through the defense, gives it up and the shot from Oliver is blocked. Out of play and a corner coming for Lipscomb. Nice work there, Marcella Cash orchestrating. Dump ball to the right, Oliver with the shot. And it was knocked out. Tori Wheeler in no rush as she is ready to take the corner. A clump of jerseys here. And now they'll spread out. Heavy reader up and <laughs> collected by Fishkin. Why not if you're heavy reader, right? Get 15 minutes to run here at the end. Why not try the ambitious shot? Best case scenario, it finds a way in. Maybe it glances off something and gets to a teammate. Wataki 
expertly moving around. Dumps off the pass, and now the Bisons will switch fields. Cash for Wheeler. Wheeler trying to connect with Kraft. Nothing doing this time. So Lipscomb with a win appears to then get the points to leapfrog Liberty. It'll be Lipscomb with 18 points and Liberty with 16 points with both teams having played six matches. Looks as though North Florida will be entering Sunday's game against Austin P with six points. If the result stands between Jacksonville and Austin P with those teams tied at 1-1, North Florida would be taking on an Austin P team that would have seven points. Five points, rather. McFadden trying to search up and keep the pressure on. It's Kraft in the middle with two minutes to go. Lydia Hint on the ground. Haley Shelton. Ball trapped between the shoulders of Sadler and McFadden. McFadden wins it. And Kendall Wade will trot back up. 90 seconds to go. All started with the first couple minutes of the second half tonight. That penalty kick in the 47th minute as here's a shot just knocked away by Fishkin. Tori Wheeler with a strike put some pressure on Fishkin and that looked eerily similar to the shot from Kara Ponza in the first half where she just pulled it and said why not nearly it paid off. Credit Fishkin there a terrific save to bat it away. 45 seconds and counting as Grace Oliver sets up to take the corner. Played into the heart of the box. Hint to her left, Lydia Hint across. Stout header from Haynes Grant. And it appears as though the Bisons can effectively take a knee here essentially with five seconds and counting, Lipscomb Another dominant showing as they continue their torrid stretch. Excellent form for the Bisons over the last month. And that continues here tonight. A 3-0 win over North Florida. Goals from Kara Paza and Kelly Byler. A pair of second half goals for Byler. Penalty kick goal in the 48th minute. And then the icing on top. A gorgeous sequence as Kalea Perry. A dump pass with her back to the goal. Found Byler who sneaks it through the defense into the right corner for the Brace. Her fourth goal in her last two games, her 10th goal of the season, goals 9 and 10 for Byler tonight as she cements her stranglehold on perhaps a Conference Player of the Year award. This was a dominant Lipscomb win. They improved to a perfect 6-0 in conference play. They're now 6-1 here at home this season. They improved to 9-4-1 overall. North Florida drops to 3-6-1, 2-3 in conference play. They're now 1-5-1 here on the road. They will look to get their second road win when they travel to Clarksville, Tennessee to take on the Austin Peay Governors on Sunday afternoon. Meanwhile, Lipscomb will try to remain perfect in conference play as they welcome Jacksonville to town on Sunday at 1 p.m. That game will be here at Lipscomb Soccer Complex. If you can't come out, we will be streaming the game. Either way, we look forward to having you keep up with what has been a special, special season for this Lipscomb's crew. They'll look to continue it on Sunday. Again, the Lipscomb Bisons back in first place in the A-Sun with this win tonight. Six wins, no draws, no losses for the Bisons. And they're six and one here at home. Three nil the final 
from Nashville. From all of us at Lipscomb Athletics, I'm Noah Severson saying so long from the Music City. We'll talk to you again on Sunday.